call to worship. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout generations. Laymen now have thus assembled in thy blessed name, O God. Guide us in our true endeavor, light the pathway we trod. Give us strength to ever labor for our cause. Give us strength to ever labor for our cause. Father God, I come to you in prayer as humbly as I know how. Thank you for this day for loving us and watching over us, keeping us, Father, under your mercy in these times of uncertain distress. We are not a people of fear. We are a people of courage. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people's God, giving and loving wherever we are. Bless the leadership here, Father. Bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen.
International Version of the Bible. I will be reading from Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, old man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of God for the people of God. Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 31st through the 40th verse, Revised Standard Version. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on the right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the earth prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and feed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and welcomed thee, or naked and clothed thee? And when did we see the sick or in prison, prison and visit thee. And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Today we take a look into a framed mirror and we see our chief pastor, the man who was called for such a time as this to lead this district. Let us greet the man in the mirror, the 118th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the presiding prelate of the First Episcopal District, the Right Reverend Gregory Gerald McKinley Ingram. Good. <laughs> right. You wanted to try another one? Oh, what do you think? One try, more time. Try one more. One more time. I, I'm usually one for two takes there. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, and then I have, yeah, and then I have, okay. Then they can judge, you know, what one they want. Okay. Okay, okay. anytime. Okay. Today. I'm we, sorry, let's take a <laughs> take two and then take a breath and then start. Okay. Keep, an eye, keep the straight eye, eye contact, what you're going to do. Go ahead. Today, we take a look into a frame mirror and we see our chief pastor, the man who was called for such a time to lead this district. Let us greet the man in the mirror, the 118th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the presiding prelate of the First Episcopal District, the Right Reverend Gregory Gerald McKinley Ingram. To Reverend Jessica, now my brothers and sisters, for all of us as we gather here today for this lay organization, it becomes my great joy to present one of the young rising stars in African Methodism, one of the young persons uh, who comes a native of Chicago and is employed in the 
home health care field as the director of public relations for Burton uh, Callahan Funeral Home and some other aspects of what he's doing there in the city of Chicago. He is a fourth generation AME, born and raised, um, and got his training uh, at Coppin Memorial AME Church right there on Michigan Avenue. I know because I passed it in Chicago. I know what that church is. Um, uh, he comes to us with a myriad of background and expertise and learning experiences. He served as a Sunday school, the children's choir, served as a local YPD president, the area vice president, served as first vice president, and conference YPD president. He also served as Christian relations chairman. And in 2004, family moved their membership from Coppin to Woodlawn, um, to Woodlawn, where he is a licensed evangelist, chaplain, and a steward board member, member of the finance committee, and sings with the voices of faith gospel choir. Um, suffice it to say, and this needs to be echoed, and I need to put great emphasis on this. In 2012, he joined the Chicago Conference Lay Organization and became the young adult representative on the executive board. And hear me, in 2018, he was the first young adult to be elected president. And that's a, that's a high honor to be elected president in the Chicago Conference in its 75-year history in the Chicago Conference League. So that has never been done. And so we thank and praise God. In 2016, he served on the Episcopal Committee at the 50th Quadrennial Session held right here in the, um, in the First Episcopal District in Philadelphia. He um, comes again with a myriad of background, wonderful skills and talents. Um, I want to say that Brian led a learning lab on spiritual gifts at the 2019 Connection Olay Biennial in Seattle. He made history as at the seat of the 137th session of the Chicago Annual Conference where he presided over the Electoral College and was again elected the young adult delegate for the 2000 now 21 General Conference. So it gives me great joy to present our speaker tonight. The young man comes from the city of Chicago, member of Woodlawn Amy Church, Brother Brian Gray. Come on, let's give him a big hand as he comes. Church, say amen. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. <laughs> People are slipping away. The economy is down, and people can't get enough pay. Lord, have mercy. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for Folks without homes, living out in the street, and the drug habits some say they just can't beat. Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe.
President of the Chicago Conference Lay Organization of the 4th Episcopal District. I would like to thank my Episcopal leadership, Bishop John Franklin White, our Episcopal supervisor, Ms. Penny Hartsfield White, and Brother Jerry Turner, who is the president of the 4th District Lay Organization. I would like to also thank Bishop Gregory Ingram and Supervisor Reverend Dr. Jessica Ingram for your allowing me to speak on this afternoon. I also would like to thank Sister Cheryl Hopewell, President of the First Episcopal District Lay Organization, and also to Sister Carolyn Vasey, who is the Western New York Conference Lay President. I would like to also thank all the clergy, laity, and young people of the First District as well. Let us pray. Dear God, we say thank you for another day. We say thank you that your love still abides. I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text today comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all of you who are tired and are carrying heavy loads. I will give you rest. Become my servants and learn from me. I am gentle and free of pride. You will find rest for your souls. Serving me is easy and my load is light. Our message today is tired, but I still got hope. As we look upon what we go through as a daily system in our households, we're tired of the same old mess and we're tired of everyday news coming on and it's sad here and it's sad there. Then we go from our households to our jobs and from our jobs to our schools and from our schools to our churches. And the things that we see are the same old, same old, which has made a lot of us tired. People not wanting to change, people don't see change, and people don't even believe in change anymore. Our people are tired, tired of constantly struggling, having to scrape from the bottom of the barrel and robbing Dede to pay Kiki. Even in this day in this year, the year 2020, we're faced with reliving the torture of our grandparents of the civil rights era. We're tired. We're tired. We're fed up. Black America has been hard. Blacks in America has been brutally beaten. We've been hurt and we've been scorned for over 400 plus years. We have to prove ourselves to be worth an equal value as if we're products on the shelf from Neiman Marcus or Payless, Walmart or Dollar Tree. We as black people has been overlooked and overpicked as if we're picked from the greens collar or choosing salt pork over turkey tails. We are the people whose ancestors 
picked y'all cotton and raised y'all babies. Even God gets tired and paws the earth with his power in the midst of chaos. He sent his wrath a few times upon this earth to remind people that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Family, even in the midst of being tired, there is hope. How do I know it's hope? How do I know that something greater can be great in the midst of chaos? Well, when all I see is politicians that is corrupt and a bigot for a president, poverty and famine in my community, broken promises and shattered dreams. How do you see hope, Brian, when 60% of minorities just lost their jobs and can't even get healed from a wrath called COVID? Well, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 29, he gives strength to the weary and increases power to the weak. This let me know that our black lives do matter and that the world now have our attention. And since the world have our attention, it'll be great that our grandmothers and our, our, our great aunts will go back into the old way and prayer and fast and seek the Lord while we march around like they did in the parable story when they marched around the city and they sung and they shouted uh, until something happened. This lets me know that God still has the power to move us forward. In the words of Isaiah, even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope is built in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. Keep on fighting, church. Keep on believing. Keep on pushing and keep on praying. Keep on marching and keep on standing. For the Bible says that trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. I know we're tired, but believe me, change will come. Come on church and come on preachers, laity. Let's fight on the, with the strength of the Lord and fight with the good fight. For Michael says, what does the Lord require of us but to act justly and love and show mercy and to walk humbly with our God? For we're tired, but yet we're standing on a promise that he will renew our strength. For lo, I am with you always, even unto the earth. I'm glad we're standing on a promise that he said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but the holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other grounds are seek and sand. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. We will get through it even though we're tired. Our hope is built on nothing less. Come on and give God glory for he is worthy to be praised. I'm glad that we have a hope and we have a savior that looks beyond all our faults and looks beyond all the pains of the world and will still lift us up in the midst of chaos, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of pain and tears. God will do something magical. He will do something majestic. We are glad that he is the same God who still has power. Lift him up. Come on, Laity, lift him up for he's worthy to be praised. Hell Help me lift Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We lift you today, Lord, and we tell you we're tired. But we thank you for your word that told us when we're tired, we can find rest in you. And not only that, you give strength to the weary. Thank you. God bless. In these perilous times, we need someone and something beyond ourselves in which to place our hope. In times such as these, we need a grounding for our faith. In times like these, we offer you the one and only source of trust and hope, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, who connects us with God, our Creator. I invite you to take a few moments to ponder your life. If something is missing, I offer that it is a relationship with Jesus. Today, I invite you to make a decision to receive Jesus in your heart and accept the love of God. Today, in these unusual times we live in, you can have Jesus. Just repeat these words in your heart. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe you lived, died, and rose again. Please come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you are now a part of the family of God. I encourage you to connect with the church 
and begin your new journey. Amen. Laymen now have thus assembled in thy blessed name, O God. We first thank our lay speaker for a phenomenal word. And secondly, we prepare now to give. We ask each person to give at least $35 to the glory and the honor of God. The means by which you can give is being scrolled across the screen now. And we thank you in advance for all that you give. On this particular eve, we also remember our commitment to theological education, and we ask each component to give at least $100 to theological education on tonight. Once more, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your faithfulness and commitment to the kingdom of God. Brother Brian Gray, who delivered tonight's lay message. We gather tonight to praise God, remembering life as it used to be. We are apart, but we're together. We can't go back and change things, but we can start a new beginning. Stay healthy, stay blessed, and stay safe. To Bishop Gregory Ingram, to Reverend Dr. Jessica Eileen Kendall Ingram, to residing elders, to other clergy, to component leaders, to the Western New York Conference Lay President, Sister Caroline Hoffman Vesey, to the Western New York Conference Director of Lay Activities, Brother Thomas Davis, to all worship participants, and to our speaker, a wonderful young man, Brother Brian T. S. Gray, the president of the Chicago Conference Lay Organization, who is the youngest conference president in the 4th Episcopal District, and maybe the youngest in the connection. That was probably the shortest lay message I have heard, but it was full of power. And we thank Brother Brian for blessing us this afternoon. To all in attendance, thank you for making this lay worship service a huge success. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> 